can we get serious for a second? I know that's difficult for you people. It's all jokes, haha, funny for you. You know, you, you get used to the laughing. We have comedy gold over here 24-7, but you need to dial it back for just a moment, okay? Focus. It's actually pretty bad. Let's talk about how your life is going to end. You remember this guy? I won't blame you if you, uh, if you don't. Headed uh, Trump's ICE uh, back during, uh, in, in the 2016 administration, right? Or am I misremembering? I might be misremembering. Oh, I watched this yesterday. Basically, this guy's Hitler. We have seen one estimate that says it would cost $88 billion to deport a million people a year. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Is that what American taxpayers should expect? What price do you put on national security? Is it worth it? Is there a way to carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. There you go. That's all I really need to show. I can't, it's convenient for me because I can't show more because of the content ID. So for those of you who don't know, for those of you who aren't American, there are about 80 bajillion people in this country who have parents who are undocumented, but whose parents are documented. One of the goals, uh, sorry, but who are themselves documented citizens. One of the goals of Project 2025 is to end one of the glorious elements of this country, which is birthright citizenship. Wait, am I getting that right? Birthright citizenship? I am right? Okay, I don't know. My, my brain's Swiss cheese. Continue? We're continuing. We're chugging right along ahead. If you take a look at a map of the world, which I assume you've done before at some point, be kind of weird if you hadn't. Here's a map. You might notice a pretty distinct line. Blue and plum. That's plum. It might be lavender. Sorry, I'm not that kind of gay. What's the difference? The difference is, is it a country that guarantees your citizenship if you are born within that country or not? Rule of the land or rule of blood? In countries with the lavender tint, you become a citizen if your parents are citizens. Rule of blood. In the blue countries, including Chad, because it's a Chad policy, you become a citizen if you're born in the country. This is objectively a better way to run a country. After all, if you're born in a country, how the f*** are you not a citizen of that country? That's insane. Or if your parents are citizens, yes. In rule of the land, also, if your parents are citizens, you become a citizen. But if you are born in the country, you are also a citizen. It is one of the defining elements of the new world. Uh, a place where the, uh, you know, the, the, the rules and norms of the old world had an opportunity to experience a little bit of a mix-up. And it's one of the few things about America that I'm unironically patriotic about. The fact that even if your parents are undocumented, if they settle in America and have a kid, that kid is a citizen. Why shouldn't they be? They were born here. The idea that you can be an American citizen if both of your parents are American citizens, but you were born abroad and never visited America until you were 23. But if you were born in the United States and have spent your entire life there, you're not a citizen because your parents happened to come there after, uh, un you know, entering as undocumented immigrants. Ridiculous. One of the goals of Project 2025 is to get rid of birthright citizenship. The reason they want to do this is pretty simple, because it would massively restrict the rights and privileges of immigrants in this country. It would prevent the children of undocumented immigrants from becoming immigrants. Pull the map up, I want to check Israel for no reason. Israel's actually a special case. They are super lavender down here because they're a double Hitler country, see? I don't actually know what that darker color means, but we can just assume that it's like a double Hitler designation. You know, we don't need to get into the weeds on this. If, if, if it's, we, we know how it'd be over there, okay? Super lavender, exactly. So what is this guy talking about then? In practice, what this man is talking about is the mass deportation, not only of undocumented immigrants, but of their entire families. This is tens of millions of people. You might remember that back during the Obama administration, there was a bit of fuss over the dreamers, people who were undocumented but entered the country when they were very, very young, so you can make a fair argument that they might as well be American citizens. I mean, people who enter America when they're like six months old, you know, like their birth citizen, their, their, their birth certificate and their citizenship might be, I don't know, Mexican, but they've effectively been American for their entire lives. That was the dreamers. This would mean deporting millions and millions and millions of legal American citizens. 
Do you understand what the implications of this would be? We're not only talking about tens of millions of undocumented immigrants. I think reasonable estimates say around 13 million. Trump says it's like 25 million. We're talking about the families of those. We're talking about, again, this would, not only with its bankrupt America, this would be the greatest ethnic cleansing in human history. That's not even a joke. In terms of like mass deportations, this would be the largest removal. In, in logistical terms, we're talking about like Holocaust tier. Imagine the logistics, okay? And I'm going to get a little bit grim with this because it's true, all right? One of the reasons why during the Holocaust they settled on the death camps was because it's a hell of a lot easier to kill a lot of people than it is to house, store, transport, feed, etc., 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 that many people. We're talking about more people than were killed in the Holocaust by a pretty large margin. A lot of them are American citizens. We're talking about entire families. Not only is this logistically unfeasible without death camps, this is also economically unfeasible. Not only because you're gouging our uh, economy by removing tens of millions of workers, that would be really bad, by the way, just on its own. Like, even if you imagine that every single one of the people that they're targeting here got magically, like, snapped into a healthy life somewhere in Latin America or wherever the f*** they came from, even if you imagine, like, the human cost of this is not a factor, just the removal of them from our workforce would be devastating to a degree that you could not even begin to imagine, you know? You pe I'll, I'll tell you this much, okay? You won't be... Those orange names you're enjoying right now, you won't be throwing those $5 bills at me once a month anymore, okay? You won't be able to afford your damn groceries. You think it's bad now? Surely they don't actually want to do this. I've got bad news for you. They're fascists. Irrationality is kind of the game plan here. They really want to do this. The question is like, can they do this? And my argument is that they can't. Not for legal reasons. Uh, legally, I don't think things will matter much if Donald Trump wins. Which, like, all this could only happen if Trump wins, of course. So that's the precondition we're talking about here. I don't think legality is an issue necessarily, because I don't know how much democracy is going to survive that. I think it's logistically impossible. I think it's economically impossible. And I also just don't think the American people would be that cool with, like, 20 to 30 million people, many of whom are citizens, people who they work with, people who they live with, people in their neighborhoods, people they go to school with, being ousted. You know, I just don't think, I don't think that's very likely. I don't think that's very likely at all. Remember the backlash uh, that we got or that the Trump administration got in 2016, 17, whatever, because of the camps where they were separating children. Remember down by the Southern border, we had like photos of kids under those like uh, aluminum blankets. That was thousands of children. This would be millions, tens of millions. I just, and, and logistically, how would you move all of them? Dumping all those people into Mexico, that would be like an act of war. Mexico would be gunning them down at the border. It's not possible. Mi tens of millions of people? It's unheard of. How do you move tens of millions of people? When has anyone ever moved tens of millions of people? You can kill tens of millions. The only like point of comparison I have for moving tens of millions would be the Soviet ethnic relocations within the Soviet Union before and after, like around, like during Stalin's era. There were the movement of millions of ethnic uh, minorities in different areas. But like, even that was just millions, single millions, two to three. And they didn't have social media back then. And they still killed millions. Oh yeah. They still killed a lot of people, but all that done was all that was done under the veil of quiet. Nowadays, if you did that, you'd have people driving by the like Trail of Tears esque lines that have people doing death marches in, uploading to TikTok videos of like children crying as they drag their bloody feet across the Arizona sand. I just don't think that this is logistically possible, and I think the fact that not only do you have lunatics like Trump advocating for it, you have policy men who are unironically defending it should be like they, they are they are death cultists they're death cultists they will drag everything and everyone down if it means disproportionately hurting black and brown people it, it's a, it's a death cult i don't like i we just need to like understand we need to like grapple with the the extent of because it goes beyond rationality I think people get frustrated with stuff like this because they think like, okay, well, hold on. Like, what's the point here? Like, what's the deal? You know, there's like this, this analyst's perspective where you want to look at it and analyze it from like, a, okay, well, there has to be some kind of like way to do it or some kind of benefit, some motive, but it's just, it doesn't have to be like that. It really doesn't. It doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to make sense. They can just hate you, you know? 
During Trump's first term, ICE tried to camp California courthouses to abduct illegals. Random passerby physically blocked ICE from entering the building and intimidated them. They'd have to start mass murdering us in the street, and that would absolutely light off a civil war. It's, I mean, if you want to get right down to the, like, LARPy civil war language of it, and I'm willing to, right? Like, how, what, what, but what force in America could remove tens of millions of people? I mean, if you think about it like that, we're not talking about, like, you know, population relocations done during the 20s, 30s, and 40s with people who the most, like, munitions you'd expect is they have, like, the family, you know, bolt-action rifle or something. They would turn Los Angeles into a war zone. ICE doesn't have the, the men for this. The National Guard doesn't have the men for this. There's no... A significant number of the people in the military and in the National Guard are the children of undocumented immigrants. Do you have any idea? How many, like, young Mexican guys are the, like, the, the children of immigrants? They come here, then they go join the, the National Guard or whatever? It's, it's just not fathomable. Yeah, Sergeant Lopez, kill your grandma. Exactly! Yeah, the partition of India. I, I need to read more on that because people have brought that up as maybe, like, the closest... Listen, okay, folks, experts are telling me about the partition of India. They're telling me it was not a good time. That is what they're telling me about the partition of India. They're telling me separating India and Pakistan. They're saying that it was a bad time for many involved. They're saying they don't want to do that again. That's that's my current opinion. I would need to read more in it before I could say more than that. I tried to explain this to my parents and they just said, but we have to, Vosh. Trumpites are too cooked. You're, respectfully, your parents would have, like, ratted on Jews in the basement, in, hidden in the basement of their neighbors to the SS. Like, liter like 100%. Like, they would have. My mother believes in the JQ, Vosh, yes. Okay, then I guess you didn't need me to tell you that. Never mind. You've schooled me. You weren't familiar with her game. Do you think the military would even go along with it? I, I don't know. All I know is that, in a practical sense, any attempt to carry out what the Trump administration is claiming they want to carry out with regards to these mass deportations would be a... It would exceed the scope of anything we have any context for. You know, it, it, it goes beyond analysis and beyond historical precedent. It could, it could very literally be like a fragmentary um, event. It could be like a thing that prompts the, like the shattering of the union. You know, it would go, it would go so much worse than you could possibly imagine. And if it looks like, yeah, this is the kind of thing that leads to, like, the balkanization of countries, unironically. If stuff like that ever starts to kick off, I strongly encourage you to, like, buy a bunch of beans. Buy a lot of, food's gonna get very pricey, okay? Buy a lot of beans. How could they even do this executive order of Congress? If our country is ever in a position where something like this is even politically possible, democracy won't matter anymore. Like, if, if an order, like, remember, the Trail of Tears was done uh, in contradiction to a Supreme Court ruling, you know? If something like this takes place, it's not going to be like, oh yeah, they voted on it in both houses and it was approved in a legitimate democratic process or anything like that. But I have a good feeling Kamala is going to win. Okay, and maybe Kamala wins. But remember, even if she wins, all of the people who want this to happen are still going to be there. They have nothing to fear from Kamala because she's weak and spineless. All of the treasonous bastards who would tear this country apart just if it meant more like brown and black blood, you know, flooding the streets, they're not going away. They still run the, the corpos. They still run the media. They're still voting. All those pundits are just going to sit and waiting for the next opportunity they have to do all this over again. The problem doesn't go away. But they won't have the path to the presidency anymore. We don't know what's going to happen in 2028. We need Puerto Rico and D.C. as states so we never have to worry again. I don't think Puerto Rico would lean like partisan left. D.C. certainly would, of course. So your solution to the problem is mass arrests? What problem? You mean, like, the incredibly small, powerful group of, uh, you know, capital owners and the pundits that they buy that are trying to destroy this country? Are you? Do you think that, like, the best way to handle them is to just let them run amok indefinitely, forever, with no consequences to their actions? What do you mean? A lot of them are directly complicit in an attempt to overthrow the U.S. government during January 6th. Like, I'm sorry, I, yeah, I do think that committing crime should get you arrested. I, I know it's a controversial position in these, 
in these troubled times. I acknowledge that, but I do, I do believe that. I do think that if you try to destroy the world and ruin everything for everyone and bring hell on earth, that there should be some kind of a uh, consequence to that, I guess. I don't I mean, I, I know, I know. It's like a very authoritarian opinion of mine. What if the most powerful people in the world faced consequences for trying to destroy our country? All right, Hitler. Make D.C., Puerto Rico, and Quebec states. We could, we could get Quebec. It, Quebec might want to be broken free from um, Canada now that they're going their own, like, MAGA wave. Maybe we could get Quebec because, like, they could have Louisiana in the, like, French sort of the the francophone space you know like they they that companionship i wasn't being sarcastic just genuinely asking well th i mean that is okay it, it it did sound it did sound sarcastic to be fair but like yeah I, I i genuinely do think that in a sane country the deliberate like orchestration of and defense of january 6 should have been a crime like the only people who got charged with it were the people who physically stormed the building, which is insane. That would be like that'd be like saying, you know, the army consists only of people who invade your country. Once you fight back on their territory, they're all like they're not involved or like their generals aren't involved. That's like wild. Like in in normal crime, people who orchestrate or incentivize or prompt the a criminal act are also culpable like legally for the act i just don't know why like it's insane to me that that standard stops as soon as we talk about massive civilization altering uh attempts at insurrection you know like in america if you pay a guy to do a murder you're on the hook for it that's literally like its own crime you know if you pay a guy to commit a crime you're on the hook for that you're culpable for the crime so why is it that like deliberately leading and facilitating an attempt to overthrow the government like that's not like it's only physically breaking into the building and assaulting police officers that's what gets you the 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 charge only that that's crazy to me the logic would have literally absolved Osama bin Laden of blame. Yeah, what did Osama bin Laden ever do? Did he fly the plane? Like, like genuine, what, like, how could you ever impugn Osama bin Laden if you don't think that the people who orchestrated and defended and so on and so forth, uh, January 6th are like, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Osama bin Laden was just chilling, man. He didn't, he didn't enter the country, at least not at that time. Probably because there's no legal framework in this place, in place for this kind of political crime. I would argue there is, but also, like, that's because the law is written by the bourgeoisie, right? Like, this isn't exactly a hardcore, super ultra out there take. Like, the laws are written by Congress, and Congress is beholden to the wealthy or are themselves extremely wealthy. And there's a bias in the kind of things that they're willing to consider crimes and what things they're not. Yeah, feature, not a bug. I'm sorry, I know it's very Hitlerite of me.